Dinky was a giraffe. Dinky is a funny name for a giraffe, isn't it? Giraffes are anything but dinky. With their long necks that can reach up to the top of the trees and their tall, gangly legs that allow them to hover over the other animals, they are anything but dinky. But, alas, Dinky the giraffe was just that. He was a small giraffe calf. He hadn't grown up yet to be as tall and majestic as his mother, father and their friends. But one day he would. Until then, he was simply the tiniest giraffe in Sleepy Forest. When I grow up big and tall, will everyone still call me Dinky? The young calf once asked his mother. She replied, You can be called whatever you want people to call you. If you want, you can still be called Dinky, or you can change your name to something more grown up, like Harold or Ginger. Dinky chuckled at his mother's suggestions and said, <laughs> Oh no, those names are far too boring for me. I think I'll keep the name Dinky. I quite like it. His mother giggled back. <laughs> I agree. Dinky is a wonderful name. What Dinky lacked in height, he made up for in personality. He was a bit of a jokester and was always fooling around at school. He was the class clown and made all of his friends laugh all day long. Everybody enjoyed being around Dinky. But deep down, despite how much he liked his name and how fond he was of entertaining his friends, Dinky had a secret that he wouldn't admit to anyone. Dinky was tired of being so small. He watched all of the other giraffes slinking through the forest each day, garnering gasps of awe from the other animals they passed by and eating the sweetest fruits at the top of the trees. He was a little bit jealous of them. Dinky was only big enough to reach the berries on the bushes down on the ground. He did like the berries he ate, but he longed to see what all the fuss was about at the top of the trees. Dinky knew that one day he would be big and tall like the other giraffes, but he was a little impatient. Sometimes, when nobody was looking, Dinky would try to speed up the growing process and take matters into his own hands. Once he tried to build himself a set of stilts to make himself taller. He gathered and chopped up four planks of wood, making sure that they were the same size as each other. Then he taped them to the bottom of his four feet and attempted to stand up on them. Standing on stilts was trickier than Dinky had expected, and he couldn't quite find his balance. He only took a few steps before the tape around his feet came loose, and he tumbled to the ground, landing in a pile of wood. But Dinky didn't let one failed attempt put him off. On another occasion, Dinky decided to try a totally different way of reaching the top of the trees. There were other animals in the forest who weren't anywhere near as tall as the adult giraffes, but they still managed to eat from the top of the trees. They could do this because they could climb. Dinky spent days watching the monkeys climb the trunks swinging from tree to tree and hopping all the way up to the fruit on the highest branches. They made it look easy. So after watching them intently, Dinky decided to have a go for himself. He approached a tree, stood on his hind legs and wrapped his front two gangly little legs around the trunk. Then he attempted to shimmy his way up the tree. He tried to clutch the bark, but 
His hooves were too smooth and they couldn't grip on. Every time he tried to climb a little bit higher, he slid back down to the starting point. He even tried to use his long neck to reach the branches, but his body was too heavy to hold on solely by his teeth. Despite how expertly the monkeys climbed and how effortless they made it look, Climbing trees was far too difficult for Dinky the giraffe. Dinky tried more natural methods to grow quicker too. He knew that if he ate as many greens and vegetables as possible, then he would grow up to be big and strong. But no matter how many greens he ate, he continued to grow at a steady rate. As much as Dinky wanted to be tall already, he would just have to wait until he was older. One day, Dinky was taking a stroll through Sleepy Forest when he heard a little voice calling for help. Hello, is anyone out there? The meek little voice called out. Dinky followed the sound of the small voice all the way behind a crowd of bushes and discovered a tiny fairy tangled up in a cluster of wild ivy. The little tangled fairy looked up at Dinky with relief. Oh, thank you for finding me, the fairy said gratefully. I'm stuck. Please, can you help me? Dinky wasted no time in helping untangle the tiny fairy from the twisted ivy vines. He chomped through the stubborn stems and freed the magical being. The little fairy was so grateful to Dinky for his help and introduced herself. My name is Freesia, the twinkling fairy said. What is your name, mighty giraffe? Dinky giggled at the fairy's description of him. <laughs> My name is Dinky, he replied, before adding, And I'm no mighty giraffe, I'm only small. Freesia the fairy looked up at him from her spot on the ground and responded with a shrug. Well. You seem pretty mighty to me. Almost everyone in the forest is giant to me, especially you giraffes. Dinky smiled proudly for a brief moment. He liked being referred to as a giant, but almost as soon as the compliment had washed over him, it faded away as he remembered that he was only a small giraffe. Really. Freesia the fairy suddenly looked concerned and started staring at the ground around her. Dinky asked what she was looking for, and she told him that she had lost her magic wand in all the kerfuffle with the ivy. She couldn't go anywhere until she had found her magic wand. Dinky and Freesia scanned the forest floor all around them for the wand. They searched in the bushes and checked it wasn't lying around on the ground. Dinky rifled through the ivy vines to see if her magic wand had become tangled up in them too, but he couldn't spot it anywhere. Dinky turned around to walk over to Freesia, who was now peering under a rock, when he bumped his head lightly into a low-hanging tree branch. As he recoiled from the bump, he noticed that something tiny and silver was perfectly balanced between a two-pronged stem of the branch. He inspected it closer and realised that it was a mini silver magic wand. I've found it. I've found your wand, 
Dinky called out to Frisia with delight. He gently picked up the wand in his teeth and lowered it to the ground for Frisia to take. As soon as she held her wand in her hand again, it began to shimmer with glittering magic. There you are, little wand. How did you get up there, in that tree? Frisia spoke to the wand as if it could talk back. It must have flown up out of my hand when I tripped over and fell in the vines. Frisia giggled at her clumsiness and gazed up at Dinky. Thank you so much for your help, she gushed. I would love to offer to grant you one wish as payment for your kindness. Dinky was surprised by her offer. He didn't expect anything in exchange for helping her in her time of need. He thought about rejecting her offer for a moment, but then a thought flashed through his mind. Can you grant me any wish? he asked curiously. Frisia nodded her head eagerly and responded, Yes, of course, I can grant you any wish you desire, but just the one, so wish carefully and make it a good one. Dinky knew what he wanted in his heart. He wanted to be tall like the other giraffes, maybe even taller. He wanted to be the tallest giraffe in the world and know what it was like to tower above everyone and eat from the highest trees. He decided to make his wish. Please, can I become the biggest giraffe in the world just for one day? He wished. I want to know what it feels like to be not so dinky. Frisia held her sparkling silver wand up above her head and replied, Your wish is my command. She swirled her wand around her head and flicked it with a twist of her wrist in Dinky's direction. Streams of sparkling silver light trickled out of the end of her wand and through the air, surrounding Dinky's entire body and making him sparkle with magic too. Dinky felt the magical beams of light tickle his skin as they seeped into his body. His whole body grew warm as the magic absorbed itself into his skin and rippled through his bones. All of a sudden, he started to notice big changes in his body. His legs started to grow below him and his neck began to stretch. As his legs and neck shot upwards, he watched as the ground became further and further away, and Frisia the fairy almost disappeared out of sight. He could barely see what was on the forest floor anymore. It wasn't long before his head was as high as the top of the leafy trees. Dinky couldn't believe it. He was a tall giraffe, just like he had wanted. But he wasn't just a tall giraffe. He was a huge one. He was most definitely the biggest giraffe in the world. He heard a tinkling sound next to his ear, and he turned his head to see Frisia floating in the air, using her delicate wings. Are you pleased? she asked hopefully. 
Dinky was very pleased. He couldn't wait to see what he could get up to with his new found height. He certainly wasn't Dinky anymore. Frisia reminded him that the effects of the spell would only last for one day. So when sunset came, he would return to his original size. That was fine by Dinky. He was going to make the most of this opportunity. Frisia wished him a wonderful day and whisked herself off home, leaving Dinky to enjoy his day as the biggest giraffe in the world. Dinky wasn't quite sure where to begin. There were so many things he had looked forward to doing when he was older and taller. But now that the time had arrived sooner than he had expected, he didn't know where to start. He wandered through Sleepy Forest, getting used to his new long legs. Every step that he took was the equivalent of ten tiny steps he would have made earlier that day when he was shorter. If he desired to, he could travel anywhere he wanted in the blink of an eye. He could probably make his way all around Sleepy Forest in one day if he tried. Dinky decided to get used to his new legs first. He trotted to pick up the pace and was delighted by how thrilling the wind felt in his ears as he skipped along. He could hear the bird songs loud and clear. He could spot the squirrels scurrying between their nests and the red pandas lazing about in the treetops. He was seeing a whole new world up here at the top of the woodland. As he picked up his pace and began to gallop, he was enthralled by how fast he could move. He spotted a boulder in the distance and decided to count as he ran towards it. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven Mississippi. He pounded his long, gangly legs against the ground as fast as he could. And when he reached the boulder, he realized that he had run over to it in only seven seconds. His speed surely broke all the world records. Dinky bet that even the speedy cheetah would struggle to keep up with his pace today. He paused to catch his breath and heard the muffling sound of a few familiar voices. He followed the voices and peered his head over the top of the trees to discover three of his good friends from school. Picking sweet berries from the bush were his friends Becky the hippo, Suki the snake, and Willoughby the wallaby. Hey guys, Dinky greeted them from above. The three friends were startled at first by his sudden appearance, but their surprise soon turned into laughter and bewilderment as they realized it was Dinky. Oh my, Dinky, you've grown fast. Becky the hippo exclaimed. Her eyebrows shot up so high to look at him that the red woolly hat she was wearing almost fell off her head. How did you get to be so tall, Dinky? Suki the snake asked in amazement. Have you had a growth spurt? Willoughby questioned with disbelief. Dinky chuckled and replied, <laughs> Something like that. 
I met a fairy in the forest and she offered to grant me one wish. So I decided to wish to be the biggest giraffe in the world for the day. His three friends were astonished by Dinky's chance encounter. They wished that they had bumped into a wish-granting fairy on their travels. What fun things have you got up to since you've grown so tall? Willoughby the Wallaby asked inquisitively. Willoughby was only a small animal, even when Dinky was his normal tiny size. Now that Dinky was so huge, he could barely spot his good friend. Dinky admitted that he hadn't done much of anything yet. He had only just said goodbye to the fairy, and he didn't know where to begin with all the fun activities at his disposal. Becky the hippo folded her arms and tapped the side of her head in thought. She had a great idea for how Dinky could put his new stupendous height to good use. She asked, Dinky, surely you are tall enough to reach the fruits at the top of the trees now. Please could you grab some of the fruit and bring it to the ground so that we can all try it. Suki and Willoughby nodded their heads in eager agreement. All four of the young friends had spoken about their longing for the fruits at the top of the trees so many times before. They had assumed they would have to wait until they all grew up to taste them. But now that Dinky had fast-tracked his growth spurt, their wishes could be fulfilled. Dinky craned his neck to look around for any fruit trees nearby. Luckily, there were some delicious banana trees nearby. He took four epic strides forward and reached the banana trees. He picked a bunch of bananas and carefully lowered them to the ground for his friends. Becky, Suki and Willoughby all rushed over to see what he had picked. Wow, these are bananas, Becky declared with delight. I've only ever heard of monkeys being able to eat them before now. None of the other animals can reach them. Dinky smugly retorted, Well, now I can reach them. Becky, Suki, Willoughby and Dinky all tucked into the bunch of bananas. They peeled the rubbery yellow skin back and devoured the soft fruit inside. Wow, this fruit really is the best fruit Ever, Dinky proclaimed as he munched away. The four friends were absolutely enamoured with the delicious fruits, and they ate and ate until their stomachs were full of fruity goodness. Dinky's three friends lied down on their backs and patted their bellies with satisfaction. That was so yummy. I think I'm ready for a nap now, Willoughby sighed, closing his eyes. <sighs> Becky and Suki agreed and closed their eyes to relax with their friend. But Dinky had other plans. He only had until sunset to enjoy being the biggest giraffe in the world, so he had to make the most of it. He whispered goodbye to his snoozing friends and strode his way through Sleepy Forest to enjoy the rest of his day. Dinky skipped happily through Sleepy Forest, his head bobbing above the treetops 
and his belly full of fruit. He had always wanted to know what the fruit at the top of the trees tasted like, and now he knew. The bananas had not disappointed him. Dinky eventually found himself in a dense, grassy clearing in the middle of Sleepy Forest. The sunlight was streaming down without any trees to cast shade on the ground. And, in the middle, Dinky noticed a mighty strong gorilla sunbathing. Hello, Mr. Gorilla, Dinky greeted him. The hairy gorilla opened his eyes to see who had called to him and gasped when he saw Dinky. The gorilla sat up straight and commented in a deep, husky voice, My, oh my, you might be the biggest giraffe I've ever seen. Dinky smiled proudly and introduced himself. The gorilla responded that his name was Thumper. That's an unusual name, Dinky thought aloud. Why are you called Thumper? You're one to talk, Thumper the gorilla answered back. Why are you called Dinky when you're so tall? Dinky giggled. Thumper had a point. It was rather silly of him to be called Dinky now that he was much taller than every other creature in Sleepy Forest. Thumper asked if Dinky would like to relax with him, and Dinky agreed. He was feeling quite full after eating so much fruit. And he was feeling pretty tired after walking for so long. Besides, it wasn't every day that a gorilla invited you to hang out with them. The gorillas didn't normally associate with many other animals. They tended to keep to themselves. As Dinky and Thumper sat in the grass and got to know each other, Dinky discovered why the gorillas tended to be solitary animals. Thumper explained. Everyone thinks that because I'm so big that I'm not very friendly. Not many animals want to play with me because I'm so much bigger than them. But I'm just the same as everyone else. I want to join in the fun too. Dinky felt sorry for Thumper and replied, Well, don't worry, I'll play with you. I'm even bigger than you are, (laughs) so it's no problem for me. Thumper's eyes grew wide with pleasure. It had been a long time since anyone had wanted to play with him. Little did Thumper know that it would be a special occasion for Dinky too. Dinky was usually too small to play with bigger animals like gorillas, but today he had the opportunity. The pair of newfound friends played together for hours. They chased each other, playing tag and hide and seek, although neither of them was particularly good at hiding. They learnt chants and practised some hand-clap games and even choreographed a little dance together. They had a jolly good time. After a while, Thumper the gorilla grew tired and laid back down in the grass to enjoy the last of the day's sunlight. Dinky looked at the sky and became aware of how the day had slipped away from him. Sunset wasn't far off, and he only had a limited amount of time left as the biggest giraffe in the world. I've got to go now, Dinky informed Thumper. But I'll see you soon, 
and we can play together again. Although I might look a little bit different the next time you see me. Thumper waved goodbye to his new friend from his comfy bed in the long grass, and Dinky made his way back through Sleepy Forest. Dinky needed to make sure that he was close to home for when the sunset and bedtime came. He made his way through Sleepy Forest, feeling sleepier with every step. It took a lot of energy to move such a big body. Dinky's usual small frame was much lighter to carry. Something that Dinky had always wondered about was where the sun went when it set behind the mountain. Did the sun have a cosy bed in the sky that it disappeared into? Or did the sun live in a house hidden behind the mountain? Dinky wanted to find out, and today he had the perfect opportunity to do so. Dinky walked all the way to the base of the mountain, which the sun set behind every evening. The sun was already low in the sky and was beginning to slowly glide through the air, getting lower and lower with each passing minute. The bright blue sky was now purple, and the once bright white sun was now a creamy orange colour, flickering with only a few gentle pulses of light. Nighttime would soon be here, and Dinky would return to his normal mini size again. Despite how much fun he had had today, Dinky was looking forward to being himself again. One day, he would be as tall as all the other giraffes and be able to eat the high fruit and play with the bigger animals. But there were things that he liked about being small. He enjoyed eating the berries on the bushes that he was currently too tall to stoop down and search for. He liked playing with his friends, who were smaller in size to him. And he liked being as light as a feather. It meant that he could run around as much as he wanted without getting tired. Dinky watched the sun start to disappear over the side of the mountain, and he craned his neck to witness where it went. He was so tall that, with a bit of a push, he could see over the side of the mountain to what was on the other side. To his surprise, He didn't see a bed in the sky or a little house where the sun lived. He just saw a long stretch of land reaching all the way out to the sea. Dinky had never known that there was a sea near Sleepy Forest, but now he did. Although it would take a very long time to walk there. Dinky continued to watch the sun as it floated down through the sky and disappeared over the horizon, past the furthest point of the sea. Darkness fell upon sleepy forest and the land beyond, and Dinky let out a big yawn. He looked down at his body, expecting to see it shrink, but it was exactly the same as before. He was still the biggest giraffe in the world. How was he going to fit into his bed if he stayed the same size all night? But just at that moment, 
A familiar voice appeared out of nowhere. He turned his head to see Frisia the fairy fluttering her wings next to him. Hello again, Dinky, she greeted him. Have you had a good day? Did you like your wish? Dinky nodded his head and let out another big yawn. He had had a wonderful day, all thanks to her magic. Frisia was pleased to hear that he had enjoyed it and asked him if he would like to stay as the biggest giraffe in the world for an extra day. She would be happy to grant him one more wish if he wanted it. Dinky was grateful for her offer, but he politely declined. He missed being his little old self, and all that he wanted more than Anything right now was to curl up in his comfy small bed with his parents. Frisia smiled, waved her wand in the air, and gently tapped the top of Dinky's head. Sparkles of light fluttered across his head, trickled down his neck spread over his body and cascaded all the way down his tail and legs to his feet. His body felt warm and fuzzy and he closed his eyes as his body felt like it was melting into a puddle. Dinky was his small self again. He thanked Frisia for her generosity and she wished him good night before flying off into the night sky. Dinky made the short walk home to his family, yawning all the way. When he eventually reached his home, his mother had already prepared his bed for him and his father had brewed him a cup of hot chocolate, just like always. But Dinky was so tired tonight that he didn't need a drink. He promptly kissed his parents on the cheek and snuggled himself into his beloved bed. His mother tucked him under the duvet covers and kissed his forehead. Dinky wondered whether he would tell his parents about his magical adventure in the morning. They might think he was just dreaming it all up. But Dinky knew the truth. He had enjoyed a taste of what it would be like to be a tall giraffe. And one day, He would enjoy those escapades every day. But for now, Dinky was perfectly content being his young, mini self, enjoying all of the fun, special things that he only got to do while he was a child and Dinky in stature.